Hey, what's up, guys? We have Ben Cooper on the podcast to talk about poker. He recently played on Hustler Casino Live. That's how I found him. So what's going on, Ben? How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Good. So, yeah, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, just uh, haven't really had a real job in a few years. Just played a lot of poker over the last probably, I don't know, 10 years or so. And I uh, was lucky enough to play on Hustler a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that's a, you know, that's like the, that's like my ideal life. That's why I wanted to get poker, professional poker players on. I just had one on recently. And then I've also had some, I had one guy from HCL, you might know him, DJ. Um, I'm forgetting his, I'm forgetting his DJ name. Uh, but like the, yeah, exactly. I had yeah. DJ Washburn on. He was probably actually one of the, the bigger guests I've had on. But this isn't like only a poker podcast. It's um, I interview you know people from Reddit or whatever. But yeah, you know my goal is to get someone on who plays poker professionally. So yeah, so you would consider yourself like a professional poker player, right? Like when I asked you off podcast, you were kind of unclear, like maybe yes, maybe no type thing. Yeah, yeah, I would say it's yeah, not 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 super clear. Um, I guess when I think of like a professional player, I just think of someone who's like been doing specifically poker over a long period of time, which I, I definitely haven't been. I've kind of just been off and on like a casual player, I guess. And like generally winning when I play, but uh, yes, it's, it's tough to say what a professional exactly is, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, basically overall, like that's how you make your money, right. Is playing poker. Yeah. Some, sometimes some of my money's from poker. Yeah. But definitely not. Um, like a pure professional, like a lot of guys are who like only play poker and have done that for yeah. a long time. Do you have like a day job too, or is it pretty much just poker, like casual poker, but you're making enough to like live off of basically? Right. Yeah. I haven't had a real job in quite a while. Like I've done some like weird side jobs. Uh, I've done some like sports betting. Um, some like sometimes i like flip stuff <laughs> uh if i can find good deals on stuff um so yeah not not just, just specifically poker but oh, like a yeah good, good amount of poker yeah okay cool so and you live up in canada you live in like british columbia right like is it vancouver yeah. area or uh it's like uh about an hour flight north of vancouver okay yeah. and you said yeah, you've been playing sure. okay and you said you've been playing for like 10 years right so how, how did you get into poker and was that kind of like your goal was to or is your still your goal maybe to like one day play just full time or all um, the time i guess yeah i i don't think it was ever like my goal of mine uh i just got in like introduced to the game back when i was i don't know 12 years old or so just playing with like friends and family when poker really picked up in popularity uh like in the mid 2000s after um Chris Moneymaker won the World Series in 03, I believe. Um, and just kind of got more, more and more into it as as I got older. Like once I was 17, I had my own full tilt account and started to play more and like play, play more in university and stuff like that. And just, just always loved the game and um, generally did pretty well at it from the beginning and just, I don't know, kept, kept playing, I guess. Yeah, and so now are you primarily playing online, or do you play a lot live too, or is it both? Or, uh, yeah, definitely both. Um, obviously, during COVID, especially in BC, they were really strict about uh, no live poker. Like in in my city here, there was no live poker for oh, like over two years. Um, so I, obviously during that, I wasn't playing live at all. Um, but I, overall, overall, probably I, I definitely do do both. Um, I, I definitely l like to mix it up. I find I, I get burnt out of, you know, either one if I do just, just one for, for too long. Okay. And are you like, are you, I mean, you must be, but are you like good enough to crush online? Like, are you like one, like you're obviously able to like compete at the, the higher levels online or how, what, what stakes do you play? Uh, online, I, I play like mid stakes PLO mostly like one, two to five, ten. And you're able to, you know, beat the game at those levels? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I, I don't know if I'm good enough to beat, like, 
I don't know, like 250, like 500 zoom on stars is pro. I, I don't think I would beat that. Like 500 zoom on stars is insanely tough. I don't think I could beat that. But uh, like mid six PLO games, even online, I find are still fairly soft. Yeah. And what, so what site do you play on mostly poker stars or no other, other ones um, too? Yeah. Just, just like other weird sites. Like there's a, a BC site I play on quite a bit called uh, play now. So you have to be in BC or I think Manitoba or Quebec or Quebec to play on there. Um, sometimes like sports betting sites have pretty decent games like Bodog and bet three, six, five. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't played on stars in probably, probably five years. Just stars g- generally have uh, pr- pretty tough games compared to other sites. Okay. And then is Bodog, is that linked to like Ignition or there's the, there's the other one that's linked to Ignition. I'm forgetting the name of it here in America. Oh, yeah, uh, sure. I think, I think Bodog's Bovada. Okay. Bovada. States. That's what I mean. Yeah. So yeah, they have Bovada here in Ignition, but both of those are like kind of like illegal or whatever, like, you know, in, yeah. in the gray area, because they're actually mm-hmm. ran out of the country. But so I, when I was playing, I was playing on Ignition and I wasn't doing very well online. Like, I feel like I do a lot better live because, you know, as you know, the games are like easier live. And mm-hmm. unfortunately here in the States, it's like not legal. So there's not like a, like a really good easy way to kind of like play. And so I kind of like eventually just gave up on online. I want to get back into it, but because of like time mm-hmm. and money, it's hard. Um, yeah. So how did you end up playing in the Hustler Casino live game? Because I, oh, okay. so my background to you on the game was, I think I saw something on Reddit about like, you know, the, sh- the sashimi hand where she like, I guess like pushed over your chips or something like that. Oh, right. Like I saw people talking about that. And then I saw you do an AMA and then I went to go check it out. But in the, in that hand, I couldn't really even see her push over your chips. I think they said something about it, but like, you couldn't really see it. It was just like a, of you. Mm-hmm. So if you want, you can like maybe, you know, obviously go over that hand or any other hands are interested in it. Also, yeah, like how did how did you end up playing in it? Right. Um, well, DQ, the guy who was sitting on my left in the show, he's he's been on tons of poker shows over the past few years. Uh, he wanted to give back to the community and did a giveaway for two different spots for basically – you got your airfare paid for and your hotel and you got to play on the Monday show and they would give you, he would give you two different $4,000 buy-ins and you got to keep any profit on, on either buy-in. And I just was the lucky guy to win that giveaway or at least the first one. So So how did, how did the giveaway go down? Like, was it like an online like giveaway or like, why was he even doing a giveaway? Uh, he just, I don't know, wanted to be nice and give back to the community, I guess. It was just like a normal Twitter giveaway. Um, I think w- when I entered, there was like 9,000 entries and you could get up to five. So, you know, I thought there'd be more people, but it was like, a, yeah, one in 1800 shot of me winning. Oh, wow. So is mm-hmm. he kind of like a big poker name and he has like a, he must have like somewhat of like a big Twitter um, presence or something to get like that many people. Um, well, they they advertised it on the Hustler show for a few weeks before they did, did the drawing, and yeah, I, I don't think he doesn't have like a huge Twitter following or anything. Like he's fairly well known in, uh, like I would say the like in the poker scene or at least like the like streamed cash game scene, especially in Texas. Um, yeah, I, he's just a super nice guy who wanted to give back, and he thought this would be a cool way, cool way to do it. Okay, so he is he kind of he's kind of like a rampage type guy, or like a Mariano, like a streamer, like a, a YouTube streamer that just kind of like wanted to give out like a like a charity thing. Um, no, he doesn't or does he stream, stream or no? No, okay. no, he doesn't stream. I don't think he has uh, like a YouTube channel or anything. He just um, he's just on a lot of the streams and. Okay, like like mostly HCL or other ones too, like Texas ones too. Yeah, a lot of Texas ones. He's on the Hustler stream. I think he said he's been on there like a dozen times or so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So basically, you won. Okay, so you won that that giveaway, and then you just were like, okay, I'm gonna go down there and play, and you just played one night, right? And then, 
um, on the street. Did you do anything? Yeah. Did you do anything else while you were down there? Because I'm in like the, the LA area. Right. Um, no, I, I pretty much just played poker. Um, uh, yeah, I just, I was there the Monday and just, just played on the stream and I was there for a few extra days and just played a couple extra days at, at, at the hustler. I was there for the big Sunday meetup game, which was cool. There's like, I think almost 30 tables going just for the meetup game and like tons of people on the wait list. Uh, they had well, DJ Washburn was uh, DJing, and they said music <laughs> blaring in the in the crystal room. It was it was pretty wild. Uh, yeah, I've actually never been to Husser Casino. I I'd say I kind of want to go to like check it out and like mm-hmm. maybe meet some play. I don't really know why I haven't, but because um, I'm kind of into like the whole fandom thing of going and like meeting players and stuff. But um, I've never been there. I've never been to the bike. But like I said, I live about an hour and a half away or so. And I really, I really should go and play, but yeah. So how was your experience playing on it? To be honest with you, I didn't watch too much of the stream. It's hard for me to like watch all mm-hmm. five hours. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, so I don't know, maybe you can like go over some of the hands that you were involved with. I don't even really know how you did. Did, did it end up being like a good night for you or. Uh, I'd say it was, I, I mean, I won just under five grand, uh, which was obviously pretty good, but. I, th- I think I didn't, I felt like I didn't run too great or too bad, probably just like around average um, given the circumstances uh, I had, you know, two free $4,000 buy-ins. Um, okay. And yeah. My experience on the show, um, honestly, I was <laughs> on the, I was supposed to fly down Saturday morning and my flight got canceled like the night before. So I was up to like 1 a.m. trying to rebook flights and I found one, uh, but it was a 6 a.m. flight and I didn't get into, didn't, didn't get to the hotel until like 11 o'clock. So it was a super long day with like no sleep. And the next day was the, the meetup game. So I was at the casino like all day with not much sleep. So once it came down to the Monday show, I was like super burnt out. Just uh, definitely wasn't playing my A game or anything. Um, so, but I, I think fortunately for me, most of the hands weren't, uh, weren't like too tough to play. So I, I got lucky in that sense. Um, but I mean, it was definitely fun being on the show. Um, they do, it, it kind of just felt like poker. Like <laughs> I was kind of expecting there to be like big cameras and lights in your face, but it, it just felt like a pretty much like a normal game that I was playing. Yeah. And I mean, so was there any, any hands that you can would even be able to go over or were they all just kind of like, you know, not like really exciting hands. Um, I mean, I know there was that, that, that one hand, like I said, where I think she had ACE King and you at tens yeah. and it came like two, three, four, and then ACE and then five. Right. So chop, you yeah. guys ended up chop. Yeah. And um, yeah. any other hands, any other big hands? Uh, and then what, well, what were had, the stakes too? Like, uh, it was, it was a five, five, 10 or something. 10, 20, 40 with a okay. $20 ante. And there was a lot of straddling going on. So probably, probably like half the hands had like an $80 or $100 straddle. So were so, those like kind of big stakes for you? Uh, yeah, bigger than anything I've ever played. Um, here, here in Canada, or at least in the West Coast, there's very little um, no limit games that are bigger than 1-2 or 1-3. Um, so pr- pretty much any game I've played bigger than that is PLO. So... Uh, especially recently, I mostly just played PLO. Probably like eighty percent of the poker I've played in the last, I don't know, four years has been PLO. Um, and those games can definitely play a little bit bigger. Like especially in Alberta, there they can be a little crazy. But I usually play like one two five or five 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 ten. Um, yeah, and the biggest was like five five ten twenty. So. Probably like a little bit smaller than the 10, 20, 40 for sure. Yeah. Even though PLO does tend to play like bigger, right? So. Yeah. In, in a way. Yeah. Pro- like yeah. more all ins probably. Yeah. So what were some of the big hands in that session? Uh, on, on the show? You mean? Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't have too many uh, bigger hands like. I think that like the first big hand I won, there was like a race of 200 and I think five, like it was five or six calls. 
uh, and it was a straddle hand. So it was 10, 10 20, 40, 80, raised to 200, and I, I think five calls. And I had 3,200 in front of me. So I only had uh, like 40 big blinds. And with that many raises, I'm, I think I'm just shoving or folding and I came. So it was pr pretty easy all in. I got called by ace queen and held. Um, and yeah. I, I think there, there wasn't too many interesting hands until uh, I had sixes in the small blind, I think. And my, my strategy in general going into the game was I didn't expect you people to be folding to three bets. So I, I was like planning on just not three betting anything uh, like speculative, like medium pairs or like low, like low suited aces. I was just going to pretty much three bet like top, I don't know, five to 10% of hands for, for value. Cause I, I didn't think anyone would fold. Um, so sixes was pretty much just pure call. And I think there were two other calls and the fall came eight, five, four rainbow. And it checked to Wolfgang, who was the free flop raiser, I believe. And he bet, he bet about a third pot. He bet like 300 into 900. And I believe I had like 5,000 to start the hand. And on eight, five, four sixes, I think you can call our raise. Um, but given my situation where there was, uh, where I had the free buy and I was kind of incentivized just to gamble and even if he's, even if he's ahead, um, it felt like, it felt like it was worth it to just try and gamble and double up. And if I lose, I just go back to 4,000. It's not a huge deal. So I raised to 11 and he called. So there's like just over three in the pot and I had, I think like 35 behind. Or sorry, there was a plus draw on the flop. It was eight, 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 five, four plus draw. And turn was a spring backdoor plus draw, which is a pretty bad card for me. Um, especially giving the ace, given the I ace bringing. Yeah, bringing is it, uh, yeah. the second plus draw. Yeah. Yeah. Just given that, like, from my point of view, I know that, like, I'm happily raising, like, eight, seven suited to get in just to gamble or like six to sevens like any flush draw um yeah and the, and the ace is really bad because especially if he has what he did have was not flush draw i'm like almost dead or if his pocket aces i'm dead or so i i checked and he checked back and river was another eight and which is probably pretty good card for me like i said i can have a lot i'm check raising a lot of eights to get in on flop and I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how often I should be bluffing the river, but given my situation where if I check and give up and lose the pot, I have $3,500. And if I go all in and he folds, I win the pot, which was like, I don't know, a little, a little over six grand, I think. And if I go all in and he calls, I lose, I'm back to four grand anyway. So from my point of view, shoving seemed pretty good, like every time. Um, but if it was my own money, I don't know how often I would shove. Maybe, I don't know. I'm <laughs> I'm not too studied in no limits. So maybe sometimes, I don't know. But I shoved and fortunately ended up folding. That was- Oh, wow. One, he ended one, up, of the, one of the big hands I played. Yeah. Did he, he ended up folding the the ace? He had aces? Yeah, he had, ace, ace nine of clubs, yeah. Oh, wow. Which, yeah, I mean- Which kind of makes sense. Also, they didn't show on the stream. Um, I hand got flipped. I think it was King, King 10 offsuit with the 10 of clubs. So there's like another dead club that blocks flush draws I can't have. He's the nine of clubs. So the 10 and the nine of clubs are dead and the eight of clubs and the five of clubs. So oh, like, it's pretty hard for me to have a flush draw because I think like King Queen, I would three bet. King Jack, I three bet. Queen Jack, I three bet. So that there aren't many missed clubs I'd have. So it's actually pretty hard for me to be, able to be bluffing there just given that he has a club and he has two clubs and one club got shown. So that, hand, that was like one of the hands I played. Um, yeah. Ended. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I just feel like that game is so loose to where I could see a lot of people once they hit the ace, mm -hmm. them calling. Like he probably, you're, you're right. He probably like shouldn't call with ace nine there, but it just seems like a, like that, those, you know, quote unquote, smaller stakes games seem to be like pretty crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of action. Right. And a lot of the guys will just call it seems like in a lot of the situations where I'm surprised, I would think they wouldn't call, but yeah, it ended up working out. 
So that it was yeah. mainly was it mainly those two that like you yeah, made most of the, the money? Yeah, those are the two bigger hands I won. Also, I think that hand um I was actually surprised. Uh I think there was like a pregame interview with DJ Washburn who played in the game. <laughs> and um and I, I think just in general, people were expecting me to play like pretty scared and tight just because they didn't know who I was, but just given that I it's literally free money, like I'm really incentivized to gamble. I guess they just thought I wouldn't play like that though. So, but I, I, I don't know. He, he must've just thought I was playing like pretty snug and straightforward. And to be fair, I was playing, I was pretty card dead. So I wasn't playing too many hands. So I think it's, who was, it's probably fine. who was the guy that you, that, that hand was against? Uh, his name's Wolfgang. He's, he's a pretty big uh, YouTube channel for, for okay. poker. Because yeah. I feel like DJ Washburn is the type of guy who who would probably call there, right? Because I think that yeah, I feel like a lot of people would, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you probably had like a pretty good read on this guy to know that like he's a tighter, probably more solid player that actually will make the fold, right? Maybe honestly, I just thought, <laughs> <laughs> um, just given given my situation in if I shove any calls, I'm back to four thousand anyway. So even if he calls, it's not that bad. <laughs> And it is just pretty hard for me to be bluffing here. Um, just given yeah. the club shown. Yeah. Are there any other, were there any other hands or is that pretty much it? Um, I think the tens versus ace king hand was kind of interesting. Um, Even though it was just, a chop. Although you guys probably won yeah. some dead money, right? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I think if I wasn't so tired, I would have called a lot quicker. <laughs> um, it definitely felt like she had ace king just, I believe it was a race to 140, a call, and then on the button I made it 700 with tens, and she she went all in for like well she she had like 20 grand, but I, I had about 7,000, so it was about 7,000 effective. But the initial raiser also had like 12,000, so she has to be a little scared of that. Like if he has aces or kings, she's just gonna <laughs> get it in bad. Um, so I, I knew she didn't have like total garbage because she has to be a little bit scared of that. So and I also thought. She's shoving so much, it'd be kind of ridiculous to do that with like aces or kings. So it felt like probably ace king, but maybe like maybe like jacks or queen, something like that. Yeah. But again, given my situation of you know, I'm free rolling the four thousand, I eventually called and you know, chopped, which was okay, I guess. <laughs> you you were like kind of happy to chop. When you saw that yeah. ace on the turn, were you kind of like like gulp like oh oh shit like would, yeah, would that I have sure I was dead. would that have been it for you like would you have been able to rebuy or no uh well i was still on the first four thousand bullets so if i lost that i would have had like would have been on the second four thousand dollars okay so he gave you two four thousand dollar bullets okay yeah yeah and you didn't even go through the first one right you just ended up going up to five thousand and off the first the first bullet yeah i ended up making yeah just just under five grand on the first bullet that I got to get. Yeah. So it's pretty smooth sailing. So for the most mm-hmm. part, between these hands, these big ones, were you kind of just folding pre like every other like mediocre to bad hand? You weren't like getting involved with too many pots? No, I thought going into it, I thought um if there was like any kind of close spots pre flop, I could call like, but there really weren't too many spots like that. Um I called pretty much anything playable pre-flop and raised raised all the good stuff. I, I just didn't get a ton of great hands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Were you like nervous at all on the stream? Like you, the the hand that I saw you and you didn't really seem nervous. You seemed like pretty pretty sociable and talkative in that hand and like comfortable even with the situation. Because you know, like we said, you could that could have been it for you. Well, not you had the other buy-in, but mm-hmm. that could have been four thousand down the drain. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Easily. Yeah. What if- yeah, fortunately, it wasn't my money. So I, I remember yeah, yeah, watching yeah. the stream back. He said, uh, after I bluffed and it got through, he said, uh, the commentator, uh, Raver, said, oh, his heart must be, be beating so fast right now. But it was <laughs> it was like, I was yeah. so pondering it because it's like, well, it's not, it's pretty easy to bluff when it's not your own money. Yeah. And if he called, whatever. Did um, you bring your own money? Like, did you have extra money above the 8,000 that DQ had given you? Uh, I did. I brought my pack, which had uh, like extra money to play with, but I I wasn't planning on playing with my own money, especially because um, 
I, I was just so burnt out. Like, I, I knew I was not playing well, and I just once the stream was over, I was happy just to like go home and lay down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, in terms in terms of the game, it seems like overall those games seem like I was saying they seem to be pretty profitable games, right? Like, mm -hmm. if you were in the area, would you would you go and play on those streams more? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, but the problem is, um, I think they're so profitable because they want, they want, they want to be entertaining mostly. So, and playing, you know, proper poker, especially when everyone else is playing crazy is, is pretty boring. Like, you know, I, I played like just over 20% of my hands, which is probably pretty close to correct. And that's not, not super exciting to watch. Um, so I don't know. I don't think they'd be super pumped to have me back for, for that show. But <laughs> yeah. May, maybe. Yeah. I heard what's funny is I heard that about, I heard, uh, you know, Art, you know, Art Papazian, he plays on there a lot. Okay. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you watch it a lot, HCL? Um, I watch it, I would say a decent amount. The, yeah. the name Art sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah, he, he was like a regular for a while, and for a while he dropped off. The only reason why I'm bringing up his name is I just saw a hand with him today, and it was um, I'm assuming you know who like Nick Airball is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so oh, it was oh, between yeah, art, right? Yeah, 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 tall, skinny, like yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it was between him and Nick. What was the first one was between some other guy who was just going crazy with ten four, and he got him to fold aces and jacks. I don't know if you saw the hand, but yeah, I've seen these. Yeah, yeah. So that hand was like. I guess if we can go, like, I think the best way to do strategy, I kind of want to go over strategy if that's cool with you. The best way to do strategy, I feel like, is going over hands because otherwise it's just, it's, there's so many different possibilities that you can kind of go over. Um, but if you go over hand and say, okay, you kind of get the idea of this is what you should do in, in this type of hand. But I, anyways, yeah, I just saw a hand. Um, well, the reason why I brought up art was because, um, so he was on, he, he was a regular for a while, like during, mm -hmm. this was actually on, even live at the during, bike. Exactly. Yeah. I was live yeah. at the bike with Garrett. Mm -hmm. And then after a while he stopped playing and I was like, what happened to that guy? And then it got, you know, I guess people were saying like, even um, Ryan Feldman was saying like, he was kind of like quote unquote, like too good for the game. And like mm -hmm. people didn't want him in. So like, if you're too good for the game, I guess they just either too good or like too solid and tight or whatever. I guess they don't really want you in the game, but then you also have guys like um, Zach. Um, he's not playing on there anymore either, but he was playing on Live with the Bike. I'm forgetting his name. He's kind of like a nerdy guy. You can tell he's smart. Zach, um, do you know what I'm talking about? Skinny? No, like, I don't know. Okay. But yeah, this was like further back with Live with the Bike, but mm -hmm. he was like, there's other guys who play on there who, who are also really good, solid players that they have on. So I don't really know how they necessarily pick and choose who, who's allowed to play on there or not, but. Mm -hmm. Anyways, yeah, with the art hand, uh, I'm just trying to think of like some hands we can go over. Um, and yeah, I guess why why not? Why don't I just go over these two hands that I saw art art play today? Sure. The first, yeah. So he had ace jack. The other guy had ten four off. I think I got three bet, three flop. To be yeah, honest with you, bet, yeah. Okay, so art three bet with ace jack, and then the other guy, the flop comes ace jack. 10 i think right or something like that i think it was ace, ace king 10 or ace, ace king, 10. king okay so you this literally came up a day or two ago so you saw this like within the last couple of days yeah or no it was it was ace, ace king or ace queen jack he, he flopped top and bottom yeah so ace queen jack comes the guy i think bets into him with 10 four yeah. right Le leads he doesn't like even check or something yeah so that first of all well does that guy is does that guy know what he's doing or is he just some like recreational player who just do you know? Uh, well, like I said, I've mostly played and studied PLO over the last few years, so I'm not like a no of an expert, but I'm pre I'm pretty sure that's not a thing. No, be, yeah, lead it leading there. I don't think that's a thing. But it's like, uh, yeah, know. for the most part, if somebody <laughs> three bets, you almost always check to them, right? For the most part, yeah, unless you maybe I like think, flop bottom set or something or whatever. Yeah, unless maybe the board's better for you, you can lead sometimes. But even then, I think often if you're out of position you can just check everything and it's you're not losing much if anything yeah so that guy yeah that guy bets into him with 10-4 i guess he has the gutter mm -hmm. and then um 
and then um, Art calls him with top, or mm-hmm. top and bottom. And the turn comes, it makes the straight, not makes the straight, but makes it so that, like one card to a straight. So it's like yeah. now Jack Queen, what is it? Or is it 10 uh, Jack Queen Ace? So you need a king. Yeah, I think the flop was Ace Queen Jack, and then the turn was a 10. Yeah. So if he has a king, he has the straight. He leads into him, Art mm-hmm. calls again. And then the river comes blank. Like a low a low card that completed the flop flush drop. Exactly, yeah. And, and then and the guy goes... The Ace of Spades. Yeah, so then the guy goes 6,000 there. In my mind, I'm kind of thinking if I'm calling the turn and that river runs out, I probably probably should call the river, right? I mean, like how, like how would you have played that hand differently maybe like would you raise it off you're an art situation uh or do you I just mean, call it down the whole way um from what i know no limit hold them um spots like that where there's four cards to a straight and you you get to bluff sometimes with two pair um but the problem in that spot is like what are you bluffing them off of because you have like you hit flop top and bottom so it's not like you're bluffing them off of well no yeah i wouldn't or anything. i don't mean bluff them i mean for value, like maybe on the flop, raise on the flop with two pair or no? Oh, um, maybe I, I think either play would be okay. Yeah, as as far as I know, like so, call or raise. Yeah, flop turn is pretty much a call, right? And then what do you what do you think on the river? Like, would you call the river there? You you're saying there's actually a case for bluffing the river if you think that he doesn't have the straight or the flush. But uh, I don't know what he's gonna call with, though. You know what I mean? No, or not call with? You, Sorry, yeah, I don't know what he's gonna fold. That's better. You know what I mean? Yeah, on the river would, there. Yeah, you would try to get him to fold the straight. But okay, to the home. flush. Yeah, because our art did have like the flop was ace queen jack with the queen yeah. jack of spades, and art had the ace of spades, and the river was the third spade. So he he blocked the not flush. Um, so I think raising is probably a thing sometimes, but. Probably not all the time. For the most part, would you say it's just a call there, or do you th- could you even make a case that he made the right fold? Actually, uh, I don't know. It's just such a bizarre line. Like you should never get let into there on on the flop, really. Um, especially it was for small sizing, so I'm not sh- I'm not sure what he's saying he has by like leading small three streets. I guess he's saying he has a straight. Um. But I don't know. Like a lot of the straights don't really make sense. Like if you besides like flopping a straight, I guess because it, it wouldn't make sense for him to lead with like like king king queen or king jack on the flop, like just second or third pair in a gutter. That wouldn't make much sense. I don't know. But the whole maybe really like maybe sense. yeah maybe ace king. But then I think he would have probably four bet pre flop with ace king. Maybe I, you know I don't know. Uh, probably a lot of time because there was a. Art three bet and Mariano called with nine, so you're you're definitely incentivized to four bet with Ace King there just to get get folds. Yeah, so Ace King doesn't make a ton of sense pre, just from pre flop. Yeah, yeah, I I don't know. That's that that kind of feels like I don't know. You probably just call just because like what the hell is this guy doing and just to see what he has. I don't know. And and he also didn't bet very big, but I, I don't know. Yeah, it's just, it's just a bizarre hand. Yeah, and then what about the next hand against Nick Airball, where it was oh, yeah. um, so our three bets pre flop with Ace Queen, Ace Queen, yeah, and then Nick That's Airball is five seven, and he calls pretty, like a two thousand dollar pre flop, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then it comes seven seven three, I think, mm-hmm. Rainbow, yeah. and Nick Airball checks, and then our bets, or I think our our art was out of position in bet, I think like fairly big. Like I, th- I think like forty, almost half pot maybe, and then, and then or, or maybe not, maybe that small. Nick Airball raises them with the yeah, trips, which is mm-hmm. smart, and then our three bets them small, like very small, yeah, and then huh. Nick clicks it back. Nick clicks it back, and then Art just goes all in, right? Is that yeah. what it was? I mean, it seems yeah. very weird to me. It's like. <laughs> I mean, I, if I'm art in that situation, I almost kind of like a check there, right? Because it doesn't really favor your range one, and then two, you still have ace high. I, I don't, I don't really know the reason. Besides, art was just pissed off and just like thought he was Nick was full of shit and just I don't know. Like you know, what, like what, like what would you do there with ace queen? Um, 
<laughs> well, from I don't know. From what I know about, I don't know. I've only studied PLO. So on PLO, on paired boards, when you're out of position, you do get to do a lot of betting for very small sizing. Um, I think that's probably similar to no limit hold them too. Even though it's less likely you have a seven, you're just going to have all the over pairs. Um, and even like ace highs are pretty strong hands. So you can probably bet pretty often for uh, small sizings, which I, I think is what he did. Um, and then once you get raised and you have ace queen with no backdoor, you probably, I don't know, you probably just mostly fold. Just because just, just you're going to have all the pairs. You're going to have stuff with backdoors. You're going to have like a lot of better hands to call it. But ace high, you maybe want to continue sometimes. Um, but I, I don't know if you ever three bet any hands on that board just because like you should like never have a seven. Or not never, but you're going to like in position is going to have a seven way more often than the three better. Yeah. Um, which, which is pretty much like trips are better than only hands you probably want to get all in for value there so i think three betting is probably just not a thing he must have just thought nick was bluffing there but i i don't know yeah well i think nick has the tendency to get in people's heads obviously and mm -hmm. i think he did in that situation and then afterwards i felt like his his um demeanor or whatever his you know shit talking was i thought it was kind of fucked up you know he, he just took all his money and then he's kind of like needling the, the whole table is kind of needling them and it's like yeah they're just roasting them yeah yeah and i'd say if you're art in that situation like i would want to speak up but i feel like it always looks bad like when you speak up it always looks like you're angry or bitter or mad so you almost just kind of have to like take it right if yeah, you're in an art think, situation yeah i think it's i think they do it i've seen it before i think they do it if like an arts case i think they like are okay with doing it just because they think art's good and like I think they think it's okay to do it against the people who they think are good. Like they did it to um, Button Clicker, the one show he played on. I thought yeah. Button Clicker played like super well, but ended up just getting cooler and losing. And they were just like trash talking him the whole time once he was off the show. But I, I think it's, I think they only did it because they thought he's like a very good player. Yeah. Um, if, if that makes any sense. Like there's no way they would be trash talking some like casual player who's just playing for fun. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, but I kind of feel like it puts you in a situation, like I'm saying, where like, you're kind of like, def you're like helpless because, you know, like I said, like, yeah, I mean, I guess win. you, I guess, no, you can't win. And it's like, I guess you can like goof back with them, but like, it's at your own expense. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you just kind of have to like take it, I guess. But yeah, I get the point, yeah. but the, but the button clicker hand was gnarly. And was that it for him? Like, so did he lose his everything he had and then he hasn't been back? Um, yeah, well, he he's he lives in uh, Europe. I think I think he lives okay. in, I'm not sure Sweden, maybe not not sure. I mean, I'm sure he still has you know obviously he still has money, but I mean like in terms yeah. of like that trip, like, I think that was it, right? He lost that like what was it five hundred thousand or something, or like I don't even know what it was. Um, yeah, I think it was like three three or three fifty. Yeah, I'm sure for him, like I'm, I'm sure he's doing fine. Like he's like one of the best heads up players, as far as I know. So I'm, like, I'm sure he has tons of money. Um, yeah. So have you ever played against any of any big names at all online or whatever? Um, not, not really. Like I think the last time I was playing PLO on stars, I played a little bit against Zygmunt. If you know who that is. Yeah. He, he was in the 500 zoom pool for a bit. Um, but that was like, I'm, I'm, I maybe played like 10 hands against, <laughs> um, yeah i think I, I played like some some tournaments i played against some very good players um last series in calgary i played against um oh man his name is takes a goalies go a eh, on poker stars um i'd have to look him up i don't know if i, I forget his name. He, he, name he's a very 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 good tournament player um i think what was the tournament buying for that one uh, that was the, it was actually the biggest tournament they ever had in Alberta. It was 1700 Canadian. And I think like first place was over 300 grand Canadian. It was, it was a world series of poker series in, in Calgary. How'd you do? Uh, I cashed, I, I think it was like 70th or so, like 75th, somewhere around there. So I, I did okay, but I was mostly there just playing PLO. I'm not, I'm not great at great tournaments oh that guy's name is it's uh mike leah 
Mike Leah. And I played with, yeah, and I played with him most of day one, and he he was uh, he was he was, he was very good. And yeah. I also played, and I think only other like big tournament player I played with. Uh, I'd have to look his name up too. Um, he's like a, a big a big British player. I'll, I'll find his name in a bit here. Online guy. Yeah, I think at the time he had the most caches for anyone online. Yeah. So yeah, in terms, I guess so. It sounds like you're you like like you said you're more studied in like PLO. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, how 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 did you learn PLO? Like, where do you study? Like, what do you use solvers or anything like that for PLO? Or, um, I haven't used solvers. I've used uh, Run It Once as a tool called Vision, which is kind of like a solver, but it's also like a quiz tool. It's pretty useful. I've used that for a little bit. Uh, but I first started PLO just watching like old Phil Galfon videos. Like probably 10 years ago, I started watching Phil videos, like pretty much anyone who gets into PLO. Uh, Phil's yeah. just, he, he just makes like by, by far the best videos and he's, you know, one, one of the best PLO players of all time. Yeah. So who would you say are the top five PLO players? Um, I, I, I couldn't even tell you. Um, I think Linus is pretty good at PLO. Um, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't follow um, on like the online heads up PLO scene too much, so I, yeah. I'm not not 100 sure. I think like Jeans is pretty good, but that that was. I don't. I don't even know if he still plays anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, so how often are you playing? Um. I don't know lately since well since covid ended and live poker was back open i definitely been playing more than during covid like during covid i, I hardly played at all um even but, even online yeah e- even online just i don't know <laughs> I, I i did it for like a few months and then once i'm when i'm like only playing online i it i, I get burnt out pretty easily um yeah but I'd say over the past, I don't know, six months, I'm probably playing, I don't know, maybe 20 hours a week on average. So not, not like a ton, but. But you're still making pretty good money doing that. 20 um, hours a week. Yeah, I've been running pretty hot <laughs> this, this last, these last <laughs> six months. Like, obviously, winning that contest was just like, just part of it. So. <laughs> and then what, what do you think? I just randomly thought of this guy's name, but what do you think about somebody like Charlie Carroll? Like, do you think he's good um i he's like a tournament player right mostly he is but he also i've seen him play cash like he has youtube videos where he'll like kind of like he almost looks kind of like a cult member type dude where he wears like the i don't know like the white kind of like see-through shirts or whatever and he's like always okay he looks like a hippie kind of but um okay i've seen some of his videos playing zoom and he just is like goes nuts on there like he'll just like as aggressive as possible. And um, I don't know, like when I'm watching some of these guys who are like super overly aggressive, I'm like, man, that just does not, that never seems to work for me. Obviously they're probably better than me and smarter than me, but it's like, um, I don't know. I was just wondering what you thought of his play, but if you haven't seen, if you haven't really seen his play, then not too you much. obviously I wouldn't think, be able to say, yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen it. Not, not, not enough to say either way. I wouldn't know. Yeah. Oh, also, uh, the guys, the guy I played with that one tournament was uh, Chris Mormon. Oh, I think I think good. I know his name. Yeah. Was there any other like big name guys there? Like Alex, Alex Foxen is that his name? Alex Foxen, I think. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, sounds familiar. If you look him up, he's like one. He's like a good looking, like kind of jock, like you know, in shape dude. Um, I can't oh, be messing okay. up yeah, his name. Like a- you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Were there any other big names like that, like big tournament or like Ike, um, Hollywood Haxton or whatever? No, <laughs> no, not too many. I, I haven't seen too many uh, big players. Which no. do you think you'd be able to play with some of those guys online if you were like, hey, like let's, I want to play you heads up or whatever? Like would they would they be down to like <laughs> to oh, play you? Be down. Yeah, I I'm probably pretty trash at heads up no limit. I don't know. Um, so or even I'm PLO sure too. What about heads up PLO? Uh, 
Uh, I mostly play six max. My heads up game is probably pretty mediocre. Yeah. So, um, have you ever played like five card PLO or six card PLO or whatever? No, <laughs> no, no that, that's not, not, not too popular. Um, like it's not a thing at all in Alberta in the live games. Um, yeah. And online, just even online, most of the sites I play on don't have it. Um, and I, uh, from what I've seen, I've watched one Bill Galfon video on five card and he said he didn't like it. So I'm guessing I wouldn't like it. He, yeah. he said, He's from, well, the little he played, he just found it hard in a lot of spots to come up with bluffs. Just, um, if, if that makes sense. Like, it's hard, yeah. hard to bluff in that game. Well, but someone probably always has something, right? So it's like almost impossible. Spots, yeah. yeah. My friend who's a doctor, um, I actually got him onto one of these, you know, these app, these app mm-hmm. games they have. I got him onto one of those. And he was, I think he was playing, I want to say it was six card PLO. It may have been five card mm-hmm. PLO. It was either five or six. And it was like these crazy degenerates that were on there, like just always playing. He ended up making like 40,000 in like six months. Yeah. And I don't, like he, he has a family, so he wasn't, and he has a doctor. So it's like, he wasn't playing a whole lot. And he, he eventually stopped. And I'm like, man, I don't know why you're stopping. Because I mean, that's fucking good money in, in my mind, you know, mm-hmm. but um. Yeah, so as far as strategy, PLO strategy goes, I you know, honestly, I don't think it's going to help me too much just with PLO in general is such a confusing game to me. But mm-hmm. so ideally, I would like to stick with, with no limit, which either one, I guess, whatever you feel like. But um, I mean, I'm assuming that you're probably a better <laughs> limit player than I am. You know what I mean? So, and you know more oh, strategy. <laughs> but like when you play no limit or I guess whatever one you want to choose, but um, – like, what's your style like? Are you pretty, like, are you just pretty tight, solid, like, kind of play good hands face up? Are you, like, a, are you, like, GTO, or are you um, exploitative, or, like, both, or, like, what's your style like? Um, well, what, what do you mostly play? Like, what stakes do you play? So, like I said, I haven't gone in a while, but when I, if I go to the casino, I'll play one, two, or one, three. Okay. So, the lowest stakes, and then if I play online... I've literally played anywhere online from like two cent, five cent up to like one, two on ignition. Okay. Um, and I've pretty much, you know, I've never really done that good online and it's really bothered me, but it's like, I've just, and I don't know what's going on online. Like I, I just, I can't figure out why I'm not winning because I've studied. I've, I've even paid for coaching. I watched Bart Hansen, you know, Bart Hansen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Bart Hansen, all these other guys, Doug Polk videos and, I just can't seem to figure out what I'm doing wrong online live. It's different because, you know, as you know, it's like crazy aggressive. People will pay you off when you, when you have the nuts or whatever. And the last guy that I was talking to, he went like into a little bit of like range betting type stuff, like kind of stuff where like, if you three bet and the board comes ace King on the flop, he was telling me just kind of like fucking three bet bluff. Um, not three bet bluff, but um, you know, three barrel, the flop turn and river. So, I mean, in terms of like range betting type stuff, um, or I don't know, just any type, any, really any type <laughs> of strategy that you can give to me. That's not like giving it away, you know, any of your own secrets or whatever. Right. Like what, what would you recommend for me if, if, you know, I want to beat online and I can't, and I'm I, obviously you haven't seen me play, so you don't know what, what, what I'm doing wrong, but is there any like piece of advice that you could give to me or anybody else? To get better um well for live one two one three games and for online games like usually like you said around you know two cent five cent to one dollar two dollar like so like small online games just the rake is such a huge factor um that you really don't get to do too much calling pre-flop um as far as i know so like when i play live one dollar two dollar where i live i I very rarely call free flop. It's usually three better fold. Um, unless sometimes on the button you can call and sometimes in the big blind you can call. So I would say mostly just three better fold free flop, which is kind of boring because you're just playing like top whatever, 10 or 15% of hands usually. So it's kind of boring, but yeah, I would say three better fold free flop mostly just to, just to avoid the rake. 
is so pretty solid. much just kind of pretty much just like kind of like tight aggressive solid yeah yeah that's what i would that'd be my my first tip also and i don't know before i played on the show i watched like one ben Salsky video and kind of had no idea what was going on so i'm not like probably the best person to ask for no limit holding strategy but i think and i don't even know how useful it is but when i when i when i play i do i pretty much randomize every decision um and <laughs> i i don't know how useful advice that is because I, I don't even know like I, I don't you definitely don't need to do it but i just it just I, I find it works pretty well for me especially like on the show i was so tired it was nice to just have like something telling me to like oh i rolled high i'm gonna bet or or uh, i rolled really low i'm gonna play th- this street passively or whatever it, it kind of just takes a lot of the thinking and guessing out of it i guess um but yeah i don't know how useful advice <laughs> that is but just when i watch ben Solsky videos he he does randomizing and he'll be like oh i rolled high here so i'm gonna do this play i don't know so, I don't what do you mean by rolled high or rolled low like oh like like using a randomizer and rolling you know a high number or a low number or medium number or whatever so like is it truly just random or is it like based on actual math <laughs> i mean it, it, I, yeah kind of, yeah well i it's usually like google rng so it's it's pretty random um you use what like just google random number generator so he's like and, he's literally just going off of like random numbers like he's just like yeah um just because in nolan nolan and hold them there's just so many situations where you want to mix between one or two or even three strategies um like very common one is it folds to you in the small blind. Let's say you're playing a game with no rake, so you're not worried about rake. Um, you, you generally are folding, folding the worst hands and everything else you're kind of mixing between limping and raising. And it's, if you look at like a GTO chart, it's kind of like every hand isn't 50, 50, but every hand has like a frequency kind of similar to that. As, as far as I know, I could be wrong. I don't know. And so pre-flop, you randomize. So like if you rolled really high and you have a hand that you're going to play, you would raise. If you rolled really low, you would limp. Maybe this is more like a tournament thing. And then if they call, pretty much any flop is similar to like basically with every hand, you're randomizing between bet or check. Um, so you roll high, you bet, roll low, you check. You roll in the middle, depending on your hand, you kind of pick like the obvious play. <laughs> um, so that, that would be kind of like, that's one of the more, that's one of the spots where it comes up a lot. Um, obviously, there's like if you have a trash hand pre flop, you're not randomizing, you're just folding. Or if you have, um, or if you're playing raise or fold pre flop, you you might randomize some of like the fringy hands between three betting or folding. But you know, if you have jacks, you're just going to three bet. Or if you have ace king, you're just going to three bet. Um, but the, there's a lot of spots I would say, especially out of position. Heads up out of position. If you raise preflop, someone calls. You're you're mi- doing a lot of mixing between betting and checking. So in that spot, rather than thinking, um, like let's say you have like ace jack on like a nine high board, the EV between betting and checking is like the same. So you, you definitely want to mix between the two options. So that's like a pretty common spot to randomize, and it's like um, between better <laughs> check. I've always kind of wondered, well, first of all, that's kind of like a wild strategy that I thought that all the randomization was still kind of like based on something. I didn't know that it was like just truly random, but then also in terms of GTO, because, you know, I obviously know in terms of GTO, there's like, like you just said, there's randomization involved. How does the randomization kind of play out? If that makes sense. Like it, um, I actually haven't like studied or played in a while. So it's like hard for me to like, phrase the question well but it doesn't it just doesn't seem like the the randomization or the changing of the play would really matter in the long run but does it somehow have like a mathematical advantage or is it more just like so that you're playing your the style of play that you're doing is kind of like confusing people because sometimes you're checking sometimes you're betting do you see like what my do you understand like what my question is You there?
Can you hear me? 